Hello, today I am with you with yet another interesting essay of Francis Bacon titled Of Marriage and Single Life. Now, I am sure that this essay is uh, one that everybody enjoys reading because marriage and or either the choice of getting married or uh, being single is something that everybody faces at some point of life. And in this essay, he weighs both the um, chances, you know, of a person, what uh, happens when somebody gets married, what happens if he remi remains uh, single. And uh, he is not biased to either one, uh, towards either one. And he gives us a lot of interesting observations. And uh, we cannot but agree that his uh, ideas are universal because it applies to all of us and to applies to people living in any part of the world. And uh, so let us start reading the essay as usual. No introduction to the essay. He goes straight into the matter. So this is how the essay begins. He that hath wife and children hath given hostages to fortune, for they are impediments to great enterprises, either of virtue or mischief. Uh, so that's the opening line. And he says that... Uh, uh, people who are, uh, no, I am not going into a very detailed explanation, a quick overview. So, he says that uh, people who are married, he that has wife and children, a man who has got wife and children, uh, he had given hostages to fortune for their impediment. So, he says that wife and children or family is always an impediment to great enterprises. Uh, family always uh, stands as an obstacle uh, when a person decides to take up risks. So family prevents a man from taking up great risks, whether it is for the merit, uh, whether it is for virtue or mischief, whether it is a good thing that a man wants to do or a bad thing that he wants to do, whatever it is, having a family prevents a man from taking risks because he is worried about the impact that his act may have on his family and especially his children. Certainly the best works and of the greatest merit for the public have proceeded from the unmarried or childless men, which both in affection and means have married and endowed the public. So he says, if you look at the history of mankind, you would find that the best works which have uh, benefited the public at large have come from childless men or unmarried men, men who uh, remained unmarried or men who got, were married but did not have children, their own um, uh, children. So, um, such people uh, are known to have done the greatest good to mankind. Yet, it were great reason that those that have children should have greatest care of future times unto which they know they must transmit their dearest pledges. And at the same time, it is also known that people with children uh, are the ones who are most concerned about the future, who have contributed, they too have made significant contributions to future because they know that their children are going to live after them and into the future. So they are always keen on uh, improving a f future and providing an enhanced future for their children. Here pledges only means they are offspring or children. Some there are who though they lead a single life, yet their thoughts do end with themselves and account future times impertinencies. So he says there are some people uh, who are, are single and uh, they do not think about anybody else other than themselves, uh, means who are selfish and they don't think about future at all because they don't believe in uh, contributing anything to the future because uh, their life ends with them. There is no progeny to uh, move forward or there is no uh, child for, for whom he has to uh, save something for the future. So such people, when, when single men, they tend to be uh, kind of very selfish. Nay, there are some other that account wife and children but as bill of bills of charges. Okay, there are other people who consider uh, the family, wife and children to be bills of charges, means um, um, as um, means of expenditure. They believe that it is uh, not a wise thing to get married because a wife and children always means that you will have to keep spending money for them. That is what he means by bills of charges. So he's talking about the different attitudes of people, you know, some people, um, they remain single and they are very selfish, they do not think beyond themselves 
yet another group as he says that they feel that marriage is a kind of a useless kind of an enterprise so uh, some people believe that the wife and uh, the family or the children would be a means of needless expenditure and so they would prefer to remain single and uh, nay more there are some foolish rich covetous men that take pride in, in having no children because they may be thought so much the richer so again he says there are some foolish men he is not in favor of such men foolish men and covetous means greedy men who uh, are happy not to have children because that would make uh, um, a certain the fact that they continue to be rich because if children are there they will have to spend money their wealth will diminish or decrease so the lack of children is an assurance that they will remain rich till they die so there are such people too for perhaps they have heard some talk such and one is a great rich a great rich man another except to it yeah but he had the great charge of children as if it were an abatement of riches so these people maybe they have heard people talking about how um, uh, somebody is rich but then what's the point he has a lot of children means what is the point in a man being rich because all his wealth will be spent by the children so maybe that is why this category of people prefer uh, not to have children but the most ordinary cause of a single life is liberty especially in certain self pleasing and humorous minds which are so sensible of every restraint as they will go near to think their girdles and garters to be bonds and shackles okay in this sentence the uh, bacon comes as close to the humorous as as is possible for him because he is generally not a very humorous person but here he says that the main reason why people choose to remain single is because they want to be free liberty okay because they are afraid that uh, a marriage would somehow rob them of their freedom and he he talks more about such people and he says that uh, the most ordinary cause is liberty and especially some people who are self pleasing and humorous minds humorous here doesn't mean uh, funny but men who like to live uh, life according to their humors who have uh, like to live uh, according to their whims and fancies such people they are extremely sensitive uh, here sensible we can interpret it as sensitive even the slightest restraint he says that even the girdles girdle is the belt that you wear to hold your dress together and garters again are um, they are called sock suspenders that is uh, a kind of a, an elastic band or a cloth band which you wear on your uh, legs to hold your socks up or some in some cases it is worn to hold the boots up or maybe uh, to hold the shirt sleeves up so that is garter so even girdles and garters such people would consider to be a restraint so such people who are so uh, worried about preserving their liberty this is one category of men who think it's better to remain single um then in the next paragraph he says unmarried men are best friends best masters best servants but not always best subjects now you must have heard this sentence very popular sentence because they their devotion is undivided uh they can if if an unmarried person is your friend at any time you call him he can come running to you uh, he can help you he can give all your money to uh, you he can spend all your time for you but if he has a family this will not be possible that is why single men are the best friends they are good masters to and they are good servants to because again they don't have anything to take their attention off they don't have to think about anything else but they are not best subjects for he gives a reason for this for subjects here means citizens um, for they are right for they are light to run away and almost all fugitives of, are of that can, condition and he says they are not the best subjects because uh, they are light to run away. because they they are light in the sense they have no encumbrances they have no burden of the family so any moment they want to leave a country they can just pack their bags and leave they don't have to worry about what would happen to the wife for the children or the difficulty of taking them along yeah, often times it is such things that hold you back uh, suppose you get a chance for a better job in in uh, abroad or in some other place you might want to go but why is it that most people don't go because uh, the family holds them back because uh, you think of the education of your children or the job of your spouse and such things keep you back but if you are not married 
you are light uh, as light as air you can just get up and go wherever you want to whenever you want to so and he says all fugitives fugitives are runaways so all fugitives are usually if you look into the matter you will find that they are all unmarried uh, a single life doth well with churchmen for charity will hardly water the ground where it must fill first fill a pool okay so he says for churchmen for priests the best thing is to remain single because uh, uh, for a priest charity should be the uh, uh, guiding a principle of his life uh, and he should be uh, a very charitable person he should always be willing to help others he should be charitable not only with his money but with his service with his time uh, so uh, he says if it is ideal if a priest is uh, remains unmarried because look at the look at the comparison he gives for charity will hardly water the ground where it must first fill a pool so um, here the pool refers to the family so if if you have to first fill a pool then the water uh, will that wa water will never be enough to water the whole ground if all the water is going into the pool so that means if a priest is a married man he will always place his family first and only then uh, he only after considering his family he will be able to consider the good of the public and of his uh, uh, parishioners and um, so such and that is why uh, for the priest he uh, francis bacon advocates a celib uh, uh, what celibacy so uh, then he goes on to talks about judges and magistrates and he says that it doesn't make much of a difference whether a judge or a magistrate is married or not because if they are corrupt nothing can save them even a wife cannot prevent them from being uh, corrupt a wife will not have much of an influence on a corrupt judge or a magistrate as for soldiers he says that um, soldiers usually um, it is a married men among soldiers who fight all the more harder here he says for soldiers i find the generals commonly in the hortatives put men in mind of the wives and children hortatives here means the speeches that the generals give to the soldiers to inspire them to make them fight harder so when generals address the uh soldiers during a war or before a war they always remain remind uh, the soldiers of their families they keep telling them if you want to go back to your families you have to fight so and when the soldiers are married men they always have this urge to uh, come back home to once again meet the wife and once again spend time with your uh, children and so uh, it will make them uh, more arduous in their a uh, fight uh, they would uh, fight more enthusiastically and vehemently because somehow or the other they want to go back to the family uh, and uh, he uh, gives us uh, he mentions the turk soldiers it seems the turkish soldiers uh, generally did not get married and that is why he says they were they despised marriage and that is why they were extremely vulgar or base they were extremely cruel they would go to any extent and he says that is because the turkish soldiers were not married and had no tender feelings uh, in the next uh, paragraph he says certainly wife and children are a kind of discipline of humanity and single men though they may be many times more charitable because their means are less exhaust yet on the other side they are more cruel and hard hearted good to make severe inquisitors because their tenderness is not so oft called upon so a uh, wife and children or the family again he says exercises a kind of discipline on humanity it refines people it makes them uh, more sensitive to uh, emotions and feelings and he says single men in comparison they might be more charitable they might be willing to contribute and help others but they tend to be more cruel and hard hearted because the reason that uh, bacon gives is very convincing it is because their tenderness is not so oft called upon because they never get a chance to exercise their tenderness the softer emotions are never uh, in play and so the single men tend to be more stubborn more cruel and hard hearted whereas a family man is always uh, his finer feelings are always exercised 
because when you deal with children you sometimes feel so much of love for your children you um, feel selfishness to protect your children from harm uh, you feel a possessiveness and um, uh, sometimes you are ready to compromise for the sake of others all that happens because the family gives you all these kinds of experiences whereas a single man lacks that which makes him more hard hearted and then uh, he says now uh, so far i guess you would agree with all the things that bacon has said because he is was a great observer of uh, people and all the observations that he has written in his made in his essays uh, hold true even now and that is why i keep saying that uh, not only me i guess the critics keep saying that uh, bacon is universal in his thought because it applies to everybody everywhere and uh, then he says grave natures led by custom are therefore constant um, are commonly loving husbands as was said of ulysses so he says uh, people who are serious and who believe led by custom means who believe in customs and traditions who are more conservative in their life they uh, are more constant to their wives uh, they don't wander away because they believe in this institution of marriage they give importance to family relationships so grave people or serious people uh, tradition or um, i would say conservative people are always constant to their wives uh, and he gives the example of ulysses ulysses the greek hero or odysseus and uh, ulysses in spite of wandering in the seas and having um, a lot of adventures and encounters with many attractive women he in spite of all that he came back to his wife penelope who was waiting for him in ithaca so ulysses is the example he cites here uh, to prove that uh, grave men are always true to their uh, married partners Bacon uh, records this observation here that chaste women are often proud and forward as presuming upon the merit of their chastity that is women who are chaste who are true to their husbands are often arrogant and proud because they pride the quality of being chaste uh, because nothing can blemish their character so they take pride in being chaste and often this leads to them being a little haughty or arrogant Uh, and this uh, haughtiness is something that arises from the uh, from their um, knowledge that they are above the others that they are chaste um and then he says it is one of the best bonds both of chastity and obedience in the wife if she thinks her husband wise that is a woman a wife who uh, believes that her husband is a wise man uh is always obedient he is chaste to him and is always uh, obedient also uh, because uh, a woman always respects a wise husband and if a wife finds that the husband is jealous that he is uh, possessive or that he is suspicious of you uh, a husband who doubts you who doesn't trust you that kind of a man is never respected by a wife so that is what he says about husbands and wives he carries the idea f- forward and he says wives are young men's mistresses companions for middle ages middle age and old men's nurses so a man so as a man may have a quarrel to marry when he will so he says uh, uh, in different stages of life the role of the wife varies for a young man a wife is a mistress because when you are young the the bodily pleasures and physical pleasures are more attractive and so at that time for a young man a young wife would be like a mistress uh, who gives him a lot of physical and sensuous pleasure and in the middle age a man looks upon his wife as a companion because uh, all the uh, physical longing has been spent and now the relation has become more mature and they are like friends to each other so in the middle age in the middle age uh, a wife becomes a companion for a for the man and in the old age uh, the wife is often times the nurse now when you look at the lives of our parents uh, of our own lives and grandparents you know that what bacon is saying is very very true because for old men wives are nurses because they take care of them uh, because they are not well 
they are infirm so the wife there becomes a kind of a helpmeet so as a man may have a quarrel to marry when he will so he says so whenever a man chooses to marry whether he is young whether he is middle aged whether he is old he always has a quarrel means he always has a justification an argument in favor of getting married at any time he can justify uh, the reason for getting married but yet he was uh, reputed one of the wise men that made answer to the question when a, when a man should marry a young man not yet an elder man not at all now bacon once again brings in a trace of humor uh, uh, just now he told us that at any point of life when you are young or middle aged or old you can marry and you have a justification for that yet uh, here he says that once a very wise man a reputed a respected wise man was asked the question that what is the best time for a marriage when should a person get married he said a young man not yet an elder man not at all that is a, for a young man it's too early to get married he should wait for some more time and for an elder man he should never get married because it's too late in fact what he is saying that the best thing is to remain single not get married at all okay so um, it is this reminds me of uh, a saying that somebody uh, not exactly saying that uh, marriage is, is a kind of a well uh, a well or a, a pit uh, that those that who are married not married want to see what is inside they want to get into the pit and those who are married and who are already in the pit they want to come out of it so it is that kind of a dilemma a marriage always poses a dilemma and so uh, that is what bacon to i guess uh, says here that the best thing is not to get married at all it is often seen that bad husbands have very good wives whether it be that it raises the price of the husband's kindness when it comes or that the wives take a pride in their patient in the patient so he says another thing he has observed is that bad husbands have great wives good wives and he says there can be two reasons for this one is that uh, Uh, such hus- such uh, husbands who are bad husbands they hardly care for their wives they are always cruel to their wives so once in a while very rarely when they are kind to the wife or give some consideration to the wife the wife appreciates it so much and uh, because a, a wife who has a good husband who is always taken good care of after some time she takes him for takes his goodness for granted she stops appreciating him maybe but a, a, a woman with a bad husband she values uh, his occasional goodness and so she continues to remain a good wife to him or may, it is simply maybe that she takes pride in her patience she feels good about herself that in spite of having such a cruel husband she is able to endure it so she takes pride in her endurance so that is why she continues to be a good wife and this last uh, uh, point that he, i am going to read now last sentence this is one thing i guess all of us would agree with but this never fails he says i am sure of this i have no doubt about this if the bad husbands were of their own choosing against their friends consent for then they will be sure to make good their own folly that is uh, if a woman chooses a husband and the husband turns out to be a bad husband if it is her own choice she will continue the marriage she will continue to remain married to that man at any cost so against the friend's consent maybe the friends told her not to marry this man because he is not good enough for her maybe the family had warned her not to marry him because it's a wrong choice but in spite of all that the woman goes ahead and marries um, the man because you know sometimes love blinds you and you can't see a person for what he is and you get married and in such cases what happens is the wife will continue to endure all the hardships of marriage because she is loath to admit that her choice was wrong that is what he means when he says for then they will be sure to make good their own folly because it they are too proud to admit to the world that they went that the choice was wrong that they married the wrong man so in order not to admit that they will go to any extent they will take any pains to continue in the marriage and hold the marriage intact okay so there ends the essay and this as i told you in the beginning is a very engaging essay and it is something that all of us can relate to uh, one or the other of these things all of us maybe not from your own experience but from what you see around you this is something that all of us can relate to and uh, understand and empathize with so 
uh, we have now uh, come to the end of yet another wonderfully engaging essay of uh, Francis Bacon and as I usually do I once again um, request you to read this essay and take pleasure from uh, from the way he has uh, what composed his uh, sentences the choice of words that he has uh, used so please read it and enjoy the essay to the maximum